it's snowing. And it's building up fast. See it building up on the tent? I hope it don't collapse. I'm going to bed. Still snowing and raining out there. We'll have to go out and check it out. We'll get up and start the snowy day. Looks a little snowy out there. Still sitting here in bed. And it's uh, snowing and sleet out there. And it's easy to stay here. Let me show you what I'm looking at. You can see the rain coming down. The snow would build up in here overnight. We'd have to get up and knock it off because it would get heavy and droop. You gonna sleep all day? <laughs> <laughs> Time to shovel. Yeah, shovel out. What are you wearing? Cat flying on a piece of I pizza. can't tell what it is. Cat <laughs> flying on a piece of pizza. <laughs> is that your snow shoveling shirt? That's the shoveling shirt. All right, I gotta get it. Wow, look at all the snow. About eight to ten inches out here. Wow. I'll have to go out and look around. Time to get up. We're all shoveled out here. We're gonna take a ride uh, into town and uh, grab a breakfast. We don't wanna cook inside and create any more moisture than what's already in there. We let it dry out. We opened up the vents while we're gone. And uh, then we'll be back. We're back from uh, our ride into town. We got a breakfast sandwich, looked around, got a coffee, and I got a shovel again. This, this is much snow that came, another inch, inch and a half of snow since we left. So I got to shovel around a little again. And then, it's not a day to be out on the river. But what we do in the winter is we clean up some of the concentrates that we got from a trip, a couple of trips. We did some speed panning. If you haven't seen those episodes, you can check out the episodes on speed panning. 
And we saved those concentrates. And today we're going to clean them up using the Desert Fox spiral wheel. We're going to set it up inside where it's warm. And uh, we're going to do that. So don't go away. Okay, we have the Desert Fox, Desert Fox spiral wheel all set up. And I want to show you a couple of things about it before I start. Uh, I don't know if they've modified any of this, um, but it comes on a little A-frame that opens up. And if you open it up all the way so it sits all the way inside the tub, it's too much and it sits down too low. So I pushed it in so it's up higher, which makes it easier to work, and I put a can down here. This is a regular empty paint can. I poked a couple of holes, you can see in the side, about an inch and a half down, so that the water doesn't flow over the top, it goes out through that hole, and it helps me maintain more sediment uh, so it doesn't go through my pump. Now, you've got two adjustments here. You've got a speed adjustment in the back. You've got a water adjustment here, which lets how much water to come out. And you have an angle adjustment here, which determines what angle. You start off way back so that you're pulling in black sand in your opening. And with the wheel going at a medium speed as you can see when I when I started up here and then you tip this forward until just a little bit of black sand I like to take some black sand uh, in when it goes through there we'll go in a cup in the back it goes in this little cup the gold which hangs on the other side of that hole right there I take a little bit of black sand because I want to get all the gold. If you concentrate on just getting gold in there, you may lose some gold that flows light stuff out the front. Um, again, it's a lot of fine tuning. Depending on the material you're running, I'm going to show you how I do it. We're going to start it up right here. All right, I'm going to start off with this. It seems to be running okay. I like the water flow. Um, the settings are probably where I left them last time, so we're going to leave them right there. The only thing that isn't set yet is the pitch, and that's going to be determined by my material. Here's my material. It's a black sands from a couple of days. It's a uh, speed panning so there could be some big things in here this is a that rock with the hole in it you see there's a hole in it we're gonna put that over there all right we got it all set up let's give this thing a whirl Now, like I said, I start with just a little bit.
and you'll see it climbing up the see how it's climbing up and it's going in now that's it's too much is climbing here so I'm going to move it down a little bit tip it down get that bigger rock out of there because I started a little too steep what the heck is on your shirt well, my shirt. Well, I'm still festive because we're still like on uh, Christmas vacation and New Year's. That's so I've got my emoji with the. Well, that's a poop. Like a pile of poop. Green poop. <laughs> Green poop. Never a dull moment. Now you can see the tailings are getting caught down there. And. You can see how it's taking some of the black sand. And we're going to try it again. We've moved it, but it's not taking a lot. Okay, it's still taking a little bit too much. I'm going to tip it back down again. Keeping an eye on it, tip it forward. And you only want very little amounts of black sand to go in. I'll tip it back a little. It's a fine tuning it. You can see how far the black sand is traveling up and it gets washed and lost right about in here. That's about what you want. I'm gonna come back just a little bit. And I think it's right about there is where I want it. And the light stuff pours off here, goes into there. Let's try it out. Now you could fine tune this so it's taken just the gold. But I like to take a little bit of black sand just like it's doing, the rest is coming out over this edge. And I'm going to push that one more time. I'm going to tip it forward just a little bit more. But it's taking a little too much black sand. And we're going to go with it right there. And I'm going to continue to run this. And when I've got it all put through, I'll be back. All the material is in there. We're going to let that run a little bit. And then this is what I like to do. I like to take this and pan this out as well. Because a lot of times the gold will get stuck just down in that back corner and uh, it doesn't fall out the front because it's too heavy. But yet it doesn't make it up the thing and keeps falling out. I have found some gold in this before. So we're gonna shut that off. Well, before I shut it off, I'm going to catch that. And I do that by sticking this underneath, like that, in there, and then tipping it forward. And then the stuff in there will wash out.
Okay, all done. I got it in there. I'm going to check that first. But gold, gold should all be in here. But first, I want to see what's in here. So I'm going to try to pan this out somewhere. Do see gold in this? I'm surprised the wheel usually does pretty good. Yeah, I could have let it run a little while longer, and eventually maybe it would go up. So let me show you what. Was, it was still in the wheel. It wasn't pushed out the front. So. Can't be much. I can't even find it. Oh, right there. There's some real fine stuff. Not yeah. that much, though. A little bit. Yeah. I'm going to suck that up. And then we're going to pan out the tailings and see if anything's in there. These are the tailings. I want to see what's the rate of loss here. These are the ones that actually fell down into the tail, right? Yeah. That came out. You got someone plowing over there. There's a few little pieces. Can you see them? They start here and they go over to there and they're real fine. Only the very finest. Need a few fine pieces in there. Exactly. Yeah, you know, that's quite a bit. Yeah. I mean, they're the finest of them. Let's see what's in the cup. I'm gonna suck them up because I don't want to lose them. Moment of truth. Now we have the cup. Now, as you can see. I uh, collected a lot of black sand with it because I wanted to collect as much as I can of the gold because my experience with this is it does lose a little. Okay, let's get down there. Oh yeah, I see some bigger pieces in there. Wow, that's quite a bit. Let me tap it up. See what's in there? That's not bad. Wow, there's a lot of pieces. A lot of pieces in there. Some bigger ones there, too. Wow, that's a pretty good pan. Yeah, it's all up in the top there. <clears throat> I'm going to take that all, suck it all up. And uh, we'll be back and we'll talk about this. So we finished the uh, concentrates we had, and I wanted to uh, talk about that for a moment. Um, it did have some losses, but you can see it caught, uh, what do you think, caught about uh, 89, 85%, 85%, maybe 90, uh, maybe 90, and we could have run it again, we could have fine tuned yeah. it, so, so it, it but uh, that's generally, that's what I've always gotten with it. And you could say that I didn't have it fine-tuned well enough, but if I'm taking that much black sand um, and still losing some, then you can't, because I, I almost filled the cup. I almost filled the little cup in the back. It was, uh, so... 
and that's about how I've always run I, you can't take any more black sand than that um, I think that uh, there was jet dry in the water by the way um, so that uh, some of that real light fine stuff did us did it escape out of the bowl and the other stuff that was in the bottom of the bowl that didn't go up yet um, I could have let the wheel run for a while and eventually I think that would have gone up um, so what's your take on the uh, the desert fox do you like it uh, what do you think yeah I like it I would have run the material through twice just to make sure you got 95 percent maybe a little more yeah it, it, it works really well uh, especially if you have a lot of concentrates uh, that was quite a bit uh, but for me, I would probably just, you in, know, in, in, in the past, I've just panned that stuff out. Um, for me, to set up the spiral wheel, I would need almost a half a pail. Like five or six times what I had today. Yeah. And then I'd set up the spiral wheel and I'd run it all through twice because that would save you a lot of time uh, than, rather than pan it out. Um, anything else to say about that? No. We need firewood because uh, we don't want to run out tonight uh, before dinner and we're going to pick up a couple items in town. So we're going to go take a ride into the town, pick up those items, and then we're going to come back and uh, make some dinner. So don't go away. just got back from town we went in and picked up some firewood and a couple supplies and once we got back here and we heated it up we were out cold it was no it, we just took a nice nap for several hours but now we're hungry and we're gonna make dinner first thing we got is some coconut oil in the pan all hot and some peppers and onions Start with those. Well, those aren't onions, those are peppers and peppers. But I'm going to add onions to those. So I'm going to chop up an onion and add it right in there. Those are smelling good. Those look good, huh? I think they're ready for the next step, don't you? Yep. Okay. Those smell great. Next step. Shaved steak. Look at that. Oh, little juicy steak. A little piece of paper to go with it. And the paper. Who's gonna get the paper? Oh, I get that. Right in there. Is that juice pouring down the front of it? Juicy. We're going to cook that up until it's uh, halfway. The shaved steak is halfway. We got the peppers and onions in there. Now it's time to spice it up. Halfway done. First thing we're going to do is take like two cloves of garlic. One, two. And a nice portion of ginger. Ginger adds some spice to it as well. Let's see here. Whoa, we like that. Probably two teaspoons, that look like to you. That's about that. Now, I'm going to add some Wild Tree Rancher Steak Rub. It has spices in there. I can't tell you what it is because they don't tell me what it is. Oh, wait a minute, it's in here. Salt, pepper, uh, garlic, and spices. But I don't know what those spices are. It must be a secret. But I'm gonna put some of that in there. And there's salt and pepper, so. 
You can put salt and pepper in yours if you want to make this, and you can skip this part, and it'll be pretty close to the same. All right. Now some soy sauce. Add some soy sauce in there. Couple of tablespoons. That'll add a little bit of salty. Uh, we've got this is a these are Montmorency cherries, dried. They're a little bit on the sour side, kind of a cherry, and that's good because we're gonna put a handful of them in there, like that. Gives it a little bit of the sour that you want in there. Goes good with the sweet that we're gonna put in the secret ingredient, hippie honey. This will make like a honey teriyaki sauce with some uh, interesting flavors in there with the cherries and the peppers and onions. Oh, here it comes. Wait for it. Oh, and we're going to go around. There we go. Now, if you've noticed, some people would make this dish a little bit differently, but camping, try to use one skillet. No mess. One skillet meals is what it's all about here. And that's it. We're going to mix that up like that. Get that all blended well. And we're going to cook that until the sauce thickens up a little bit. Uh, but I want to make sure I get this blended well. And we're going to keep cooking this and we'll be back. Let's give it a look. Let's take a look at it here. Oh yeah, the, there's a little bit of sauce left there, but a lot of it has dried up the sugars of caramelized that's looking really good I think that's done so we're going to bring this over to the table and where Tom's gonna slap it on a plate or in a roll be right back look at that it's steamy hot I'm adding cheese I just put it in the roll there and because if I put it on there and try to melt it in there it's gonna make a mess of my pan and it's all about ease and clean up here. Well, maybe not too much ease, because we do. I eat better uh, out here in the woods than I do at home. Look at that. Whoa, uh, look at that. So we're going to uh, bring those over to the table. And we'll taste it, and uh, we'll let you know uh, how it is. Here we are. <laughs> all right, we're going to give this a try. I should have brought a fork with me. I brought a fork. I figured it would be easier. Let me get one. Oh, I grabbed two by mistake. I see it's uh, really good. You can really taste the cherries on it. Yeah? Let's give it a whirl here. Gotta take a bite. Mmm, pretty good. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Cherries, onions, and peppers, and a teriyaki, mm. homemade teriyaki sauce. That's a steak and cheese bursting with flavor. Mmm. Taste of garlic in there, too? Mm -hmm. Good stuff. All right, we're going to eat this, and then we'll be back to wrap it up. Here we are. <laughs> uh, it was a great day we uh, used the spiral wheel and we got those concentrates that we had from the fall all cleaned up um, and the weather last night was snowy we got about what 7 inches of snow maybe a little bit more than that Kind of wet. Yeah. Heavy. 
and it would weigh down the roof of the tent. It was sagging in here. So we had to get up several times and get the snow off. It was an interesting night. But uh, we weathered the storm. The tent's all dried out now. There's no snow on the tent anymore. And uh, we had a great dinner. What'd you think? It was good. Good. Uh, we weren't so, uh, we talked about the cherries in it. We'd probably hold the cherries. So if you make something like that, the dried cherries. I'm not a, I never really liked the cherryaki as they call it. And it, I think I would skip that next time. You think so? Yeah, skip the cherries. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Well, I guess that's all. Is there anything else? I guess that's uh, going to wrap it up. The it. stove is over there glowing cherry red. And uh, if you like these videos and you like coming along on these adventures, hit that subscribe button down there. Hit a like. Put a comment down below. All those things help us to grow this channel. And support thehipbee.com for some delicious honey. All those things would help us to grow the channel so we can continue making videos for you. So until next Wednesday, 7.30. Peace. Peace.